Virgil has his good days and his bad days. Sometimes he listens, sometimes he doesn't. It really depends if he's in a good mood or not. I'm here. On how well he wants to work with me. And sometimes when he just wants to do what he wants to do and doesn't really care what I have to say. He pushes me around and he's always up in my face. I truly believe that most horses don't mean to hurt us as a general rule. But does he have the potential to hurt somebody? You're darn right he does. It's not cute. You know, you don't want a horse nudging you around. When you let the horse in your personal space when he's disrespectful and pushy, it's not if you're going to get hurt by that horse. It's just when. One of the challenges with Virgil is that he's deaf. I'm Clinton Anderson, and I have a method for training horses. Getting horses to behave is simple. It's training people that's the real trick. Join me as I tackle some of the most challenging situations with problem horses and with problem owners. At first glance, J.C. Jarvis is your typical teenage girl. Whether getting homework assignments on the computer or texting or talking on her cell phone, communication has become an art form. But spend an afternoon with J.C. and her horse, Virgil, and you'll see a teenage girl who has taken the art of communication to a whole other level. When you wave your hand up and down like this, you're telling him to go faster, to speed up. If you raise your hand up in the air and hold it there, that's telling him to stop. And if you wave it to the side, that's telling him to go the other direction. Sure, he looks like a typical paint gelding. Brown and white markings, white face, blue eyes. But Virgil is far from your typical horse. You see, Virgil is deaf. Virgil's deaf, body language is the main part of communication. Sometimes when he's not really paying attention, like now, and you keep having to give him hand signals and it, you just keep having to nag him. Sometimes he listens, sometimes he doesn't. Virgil has his good days and his bad days. It really depends if he's in a good mood or not on how well he wants to work with me. When he's having a bad day, he really doesn't want to do much of anything. So if I want him to speed up, you know, I'd go to his hip. I'd ask him to speed up. And if the hand signs don't really work, I'm here. I'll take the end of my rope, swing it. And sometimes he does it, and sometimes he doesn't. While Virgil understands most of JC's hand signals, there is still one behavior hand signals have not solved. One of the challenges with Virgil is that he pushes me around and he's always up in my space. The people that had him before fed him cookies and gave him treats. They thought it was cute when he would push them around. It's not cute. You know, you don't want a horse nudging you around. Personal space issues are really important to me and I see people making this mistake over and over and over again. When you let the horse in your personal space when he's disrespectful and pushy, it's not if you're gonna get hurt by that horse, it's just when. With school and the other activities that I'm involved in, it's really hard to find time for Virgil, but I know that Virgil needs the extra time considering he's a lot different and a lot more difficult to work with than other hearing horses. I hope Mr. Anderson can help me with the space problem and the nudging. I also hope that he can help me with the hand signals. I want to kind of get away from those and come up with another way to communicate with Virgil. 
JC, welcome to the ranch, mate. Before we get started with your horse, I want you to talk to me a little bit about your horse background. Well, I started riding when I was really little, probably about five or six or so. We've always had horses. Okay, so growing up, horses are a big part of your family, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And this particular horse here, we're going to talk to you about what his problems are, how you want to fix these problems, and I'm going to show you how to use my method to get him to be a respectful, willing partner. I want you to tell me all the things that you do not like about Virgil that you'd like to change. This is your one chance to have your perfect horse. Tell me all the things that you'd like to change about him. Well, he's really pushy. Him being kind of pushy like this and always playing with you here and pushing on you and see like that, how he tries to sniff on me and I let him run into my hand, that's pretty common behavior for him, is it? Yes, sir. Okay. You go ahead and lunge him now. I'm gonna step back and just watch. And I want you to show me whatever groundwork you typically do with this kind of horse. You've got a thousand pound animal here. If you don't gain this horse's respect and get this horse under control, it's not if she's gonna get hurt by this horse, it's just when and how bad it is. Okay, JC, the biggest thing that I want you to understand in today's lesson is that you don't have your horse's respect. He doesn't respect you. He doesn't respect you and your personal space. He's not gonna respect you unless you become a worthy leader. You've gotta be number one, he's gotta be number two. And you've gotta communicate with him in a way that he understands. Virgil's really unique because he's deaf. And horses really don't understand sign language, so you'd have to teach them different than you would a person. This horse's problem of being deaf really wasn't that big of a deal whatsoever. To me, his problem was a lack of respect. It was all about JC not gaining control of his horse's feet, not being an effective leader. You have a tendency to be nagging him. You're always kind of poking him. Come on, go, 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 go. And that's why he wants to kick at you because you're always nagging at him. What I want to do is teach you how to be effective with your body language and your groundwork skills to where you're black and white, no shades of gray. So to get started, you know how we spoke about initially that he's very pushy, isn't he? He's always grabbing on your clothes and pushing into you and all that kind of business. I want to show you a few little simple things to get that to stop happening. So I'm going to get my stick here and I'm going to tap it under his neck here. And see how he's kind of ignoring me? Now I'm going to increase that tapping. I'm going to make it harder and then harder. And there, as soon as he takes a step back, I release the pressure. Now I'm going to start tapping the rope. And I'm going to tap the rope harder, harder, harder. 
there. As soon as he takes a step back, I'm gonna release it. Once we got him backing up a few times, what did you notice he did? He dropped his head down, he started licking his lips, he started becoming submissive. So this is the start of your new horsemanship journey with my method. You're number one, he's number two. You two can still be buddies, but you gotta be the leader. Because if you're not the leader, it's not if he's gonna hurt you, it's just when. I don't think Virgil really thought of me as a leader. I think he really thought of me as a friend. But Mr. Anderson showed me how to be his friend, but at the same time, earn respect. So what I'm going to do, JC, is I'm going to drive his energy away from his front end. Front end for direction, back end for impulsion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point up high and ask him to go to the left. Then I'm going to swing my stick three times. One, two, three, now four. Five, I'm gonna whack him on the neck. Six, Virgil is basically a couch potato, okay? He's been sleeping on the couch, watching TV, playing video games, eating pizza and doing whatever the hell he wants to do. Now I'm gonna let my string out and spank his butt. When I asked his feet to move, he said, no, I don't do that kind of stuff. You must be confusing me with some other ambitious type of horse. See him kicking up at me just then? That's because I said, move your feet. He said, I don't want to. He didn't like that. You know, he kicked out at me. He told me to drop dead and hoped I'd die in my sleep tonight. After I spanked his butt a few times, he realized that he has to get a job. He has to get off welfare and he has to start paying some bills. See, he's got his own agenda. I need his agenda to be what I want it to be, not what he wants. Okay, he's got 23 hours a day to do whatever he wants to do. Okay, I'm gonna send him back the other way. Now, I like that time there. That time I didn't even use the stick. When I pointed, he immediately left with energy straight away. Now do you notice he's not pulling on the lead rope quite so much now? Okay, that's another good sign. Slide, stab. Oh, I like that yield. Does he look submissive and humble now or does he look pushy and dominant? He looks submissive. Yes, that's how I want your horse to be around you. It's submissive. I want him to be a willing partner for you. I don't want him to be a dominant, aggressive animal and horses will get like that if you don't gain their respect. Check out our latest catalog from Down Under Horsemanship. It's filled with beautiful imagery and in-depth information on all the products used in this show. Visit our website or call this number and we'll send it to your door free of charge. Now we've given the horse a chance to kind of get his air back and rest a little bit, I'd like to get JC involved now so I can give her some coaching. Why don't you come over here, mate? Now again, this exercise is called Lunging for Respect Stage 1. Very simple concept. You're sending him away in a circle, then you're getting him to yield and give you two eyes. Because getting a horse to give you two eyes is a sign of respect. A disrespectful horse gives you two heels, okay? So put this in your right hand, hold the lead rope, come up here in your left. So I want you to point up high to the left, ask him to go, and swing his, there you go. Now, once he's moving around, now you just kind of walk a small circle. Now I want you to shorten up your rope just a little bit there. Shorten it up, don't let him get so far away. Shorten it up so roughly the end of it is dragging on the ground, the end of your lead rope. 
should be touching the ground, right about that there, okay? And what you're gonna do is every time you kind of see him looking to the outside, you kind of pull and release on that lead rope a little bit to get his head tipped in, just like that. Really, the deafness played no part in this horse's lack of respect or bad behavior. It was all about JC not gaining control of his horse's feet, not being an effective leader. Now, when I want you to get him to stop and face you, I want you to slide your left hand down the rope, slide all the way down. Now, pull it to your belly button and step towards his tail. Good girl. Once she had the tools and the exercises to succeed, the horse is gonna come around. Now, he's a little bit too close to you, so whack him under the belly there. Whack him under the belly. Harder, come on. There you go, good girl. Get him out of your personal space. Now, look where his head is. Where's he looking in the circle? He's running around with his head to the outside, isn't it? So what are you gonna do? Bump and release. Bump it in, come on, harder. There you go. Don't be frightened to bump that nose in every time he starts looking out. Don't let him drag you around. Pull on that now. That's it. That's a girl. Now you're stepping up to the plate. Pull on it again. Don't let him just wander around pulling on that lead rope, dragging you around. I was used to like keep nagging him and like pestering him until I got what I wanted. But Mr. Anderson showed me that when you make one move. Dick, come on, come on, move it. If you mean business, and that's the one move you should have to make. Send him the other direction. Point up high, don't move your feet. Uh -uh, get back where you were, I busted you. Whoever moves first loses. Point up high. Stick, come on, come on, move it. I would have spanked his neck just then. Come on, move those feet. See JC, every single time you move around him, what do you think you're teaching him? That I move first. That you move, and if you move, who does he have control of? Me. You. Every time you make him move, you've got control of him. Yield his hindquarters, slide, look at his tail, step towards it, good girl. But lean forward when you step towards it. Does that make sense? Exaggerate your body language. You know, initially, JC didn't do really good with her body language, you know, yielding the hindquarters, leaning forward, making sure he gave her two eyes and bumping his nose in. And I had to keep reminding her. You know when he's looking out of the circle, you know what he's doing? He's looking for another owner, because you're boring him to death. Look, slide, stab, step, and see how I lean forward like that? Change directions. Point up high. Where's your stick? Come on, come on. You should have whacked him on the neck just then. Why? Because he didn't go. He didn't go. Okay, no more nagging. Put your arm down now. Once he gets going, go back to that neutral position. So, JC, where's he looking again? So, I've reminded you about this 15 times, okay? So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to help you remember now. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start charging you $20 every time I see his nose to the outside. Your mother told me you have some savings, so I'd like to get my hands on it, okay? okay. So, every time I see him with his head to the outside, I'm just going to say 20 bucks, okay? And she's going to mail me a check. I didn't really think that Clinton would take my money. I just thought that he was getting a little aggravated with me because he had asked me and reminded me several times, and I just didn't really remember it. Now, if you correct it, I won't charge you any money, okay? Okay. Oh, man, it's amazing how quick you got about looking at that when I was thinking about taking your money. As soon as I started charging her piggy bank and taking her money from her, she started changing in a hurry. I'm going to try to bankrupt you by the end of this lesson. up your horsemanship with the Clinton Anderson method now available in a complete set fundamentals starts you on your journey to ultimate control as you learn to communicate with your horse earn his trust and respect and gain control of his body intermediate opens the door to ultimate performance as you build on your knowledge to create a safe willing and supple partner you control with a feather light touch and now all new advanced delivers ultimate inspiration to fine-tune your application of the method and reach the highest level of horsemanship clinton anderson offers you the ultimate collection of his wildly popular training method kits at a packaged price
change hands, point up high. Steph, come on, come on. Good girl. If he doesn't immediately leave, what are you gonna do? Stick it. Use your stick, okay? It's not a Christmas decoration, use it. Don't be frightened to bump that nose in every time he starts looking out. I'm gonna start charging you $20 every time I see his nose to the outside, okay? Now yield his hindquarters, step towards his tail. I'm gonna get even meaner. Every time I ask you to yield his hindquarters and you don't lean forward and exaggerate your body language, I'm gonna take another $20. Your job is to keep all your money. Do you understand? Yes. I'm not going to remind you anymore. I'm just going to okay. try to take all your money. OK. That's it. Point, 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 point. Where you want him to go? There you go. Good girl. I'm looking for money now. I Hopefully, you're going to screw this up. <laughs> Get your hand over the top of the rope. That's another way I'm going to start taking more money from you. OK? I've reminded you of that 86 times already. So every time I see your hand, not on the rope correctly, that's another 20 bucks. Because obviously what I've been charging you is not really working. $20, he's been looking to the outside for half a circle, that's good, I'm already $20 richer, that's great. 20 bucks in the hole for me. As soon as I started charging her piggy bank and taking her money from her, she started changing in a hurry. And that's very common, I do that with people all the time because when you remind people and there's no repercussion, they make the same mistake over and over again. Point, point, point. Come on, use your stick, come on. When he stops like that, I want you to point, swing that stick, move his feet. That's a girl. Kick his ass a little bit, he needs it, okay? Come on, where's his head? There's another 20, I'm $40 richer now. 40 bucks, thank you very much. You want me to say 60? No. Well, I'd start pulling on his damn head, that's what I'd do. I was getting a little concerned when we reached the $60 mark. Come on, I'm looking for money. I wasn't gonna take a money, but just the fact that I could have taken a money made her step up and really start paying a lot more attention. Now, yield his hindquarters, what are you gonna do? Lean forward. Yeah. Righto, mate, let's quit on that. His head's down, his ears are pricked up. He's looking at you saying, what is wrong with you, woman? You don't normally take control of me. I normally push you around, take control of you. But you're not gonna let him do that to you anymore, are you? No, sir. Okay. I think I now have the knowledge to earn respect from Virgil and demand it. If she goes and works with this horse every day for the next 10 days, he'll be a completely different horse. He doesn't wanna be a couch potato, but he has no incentive not to be unless she asks him. You're gaining control of him, aren't you? Okay? You're getting him to give you what? Two eyes. You're getting him to change directions because changing direction is the key to what? Moving his feet. Yes, but changing directions and, and moving his feet is the key to what? Respect. G gaining respect. Now you're with me. What can you do if you have his respect? Anything. Anything. What can you do if you don't have his respect? Nothing. What, what's going to happen to you if you don't get his respect? You're going to get hurt. That's exactly right. Now I'm going to give you $60 back, yes. okay? Because you answered all those questions right. Okay, if you would have screwed any of them up, I would have kept the money, okay? <laughs> He's not a bad horse. He's a young green horse that doesn't have any respect for you. And you, in turn, didn't know how to gain control of his feet. Does that make sense to you, mate? Good job, very proud of you. You know, I see horses like Virgil every day when I travel all over the country doing clinics and seminars. Virgil's not a bad horse, but he is a horse that if you don't get his respect, it's not if he's gonna hurt somebody and cause some damage, it's just when and how bad. Remember, gain your horse's respect and be safe working with your horse. Until next week, mate, keep up the method and we'll see you then. If you'd like more information made on any of the products you've seen on today's show, click on our website at downunderhorsemanship.com and we'll send you a free catalogue, mate.